Welcome to today's video. I'm Greg Zorian, third generation master barber, and what we're going to do today is a business haircut for fine hair. So what we want to do is this is a traditional every three or four week scissor cut. Um, some people just call it a barbershop regular haircut. So basically what we're going to do is just all scissor over comb around the edges. We don't want to dampen the hair down too much. If we do that, it all sticks together and can't really see what's going on when we're cutting it. So the idea is we want a nice uh, clean taper around the outline of the hair, but we don't want it too close. So I, I call these more of a finesse haircut than just put, put an attachment on a clipper and running it up the side. Um, uh, generally this customer, the business customer, they really enjoy a scissor cut much more. Um, a lot more goes into it. And then at the very end, when we style it, we're gonna use a uh, finishing spray because we want it to look as full as we can and uh, we wanna leave a dry finish. So to start out, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lightly dampen it and I'm gonna use a large seven and a half inch uh, shear for scissor over comb. So just wanna, like I said, very lightly dampen it. And I want to use a I want to use a much a larger comb with wide teeth and a larger scissor. So when we're doing our scissor cutting, we're only using the first third or first half of the scissor. So the longer the scissor, the less uh, panels that we have to take, and the less margin of error um, or the le uh, the less margin of error we're going to have. So we want to hold the comb like this, and we want to just kind of rotate it in our in in your hand. You don't want to move your wrist at all. And that way we can take one motion from the bottom to the top. So what I see a lot is, is I see a lot of the comb being angled like this. And what happens is it just pushes the hair. And it's very difficult to control. If you angle the comb, if you hold the comb correctly and you angle it in, it lifts the hair all the way up. So all you have to do is cut the hair on the base of the comb. And since this is an every three or four week haircut, it can, and a lot of times, be more difficult because we're only taking a little bit of hair. So I make a few cuts, I comb it back, make sure it's doing what I want, and then I go on to the next section, and I can always see the previous guide in my comb. So you want to keep in mind you want to cut from shorter to longer because if these pieces here get too short, they're going to stick straight out. And that will throw the whole haircut out of balance and it won't look right. So I always want to have, when I'm cutting with scissor over comb or clipper over comb, I always want to have my work a half an arm's length in front of me. So by lifting my elbow up and, have, and, and putting a little bit of weight on my left leg and not really leaning to the side, but that forces my shoulders back and we're standing straight up and down. Because if I lean into it, my, shoulder, my elbow drops and I'm not holding the scissor correctly and both hands are moving. You just want your thumb to move. The other thing you can do is use the clipper comb. It's a little bit thinner and the teeth are a little closer together and it can help you grab the hair a little easier. Basically, whichever is more comfortable for you. But you always want to have that comb angled in and that way it lifts the hair so you can go from the bottom to the top all at once. You don't have to keep recombing it. So just think of your comb like a clipper attachment and your scissor like the clipper and you're doing the same thing. But if you can master the, uh, the scissor cut, definitely puts you at a different level and uh, customers, I can tell you with my 25 years of experience, they view, they view this as you having a different level of skill, being able to do this versus just putting an attachment on the side and running it up the side. Now as we get towards the back, I'm gonna go a little closer. So we're gonna start our taper, and then we're gonna start to angle the comb out and leave it longer as we work our way up. So I'm doing a lot of the taper 
or said another way, a low natural hairline. I don't want to go off his natural hairline. And I definitely don't want it too high. One of the worst things that you can do that I, and that I've seen is when someone has a hairline up here, you know, at the bottom of their earlobe here, even with that, or at the middle of the ear. We want to keep it as low on the natural hairline as we can. So we're doing a business cut. So when you're doing a business cut, that, cut, that client is wearing a shirt and tie every day. So if you think about it another way, you don't want to see this big, huge white space between the top of their collar and the bottom of their hairline. You want to have that hairline as close to the collar, but not touching the collar as you can. And you can see barely any hair is coming off. Like I said, it's an every three to four week haircut. So that's one of those, another sign of a really good haircut is when someone, you know, gets their haircut that often, it never looks like they had one, it never looks like they need one. So now at the bottom there, when we come back, we're just going to take our adjustable clipper and just do a little bit of work at the bottom. We did the majority of it with the scissor and comb. And you also notice I haven't moved my feet. I just spin the chair and work my way around. That way I can constantly be looking in the mirror and checking my work and make sure everything looks okay. And you also want to make sure that the hair is, is definitely cleaner around the outline, shorter here than here. You don't want to overcompensate and lift the comb up too high because it'll leave the hair too long around the ear and too short up towards the uh, temple area. So it'll be the opposite of what we're trying to do. And when you get used to holding the comb the right way, you, you have your other hand free. You don't have to, you don't need to use your other hand to hold the ear down. The comb's actually holding the ear down and protecting the ear. So the comb is, uh, comb is over the ear, so you're in no danger of um, hitting the ear with the scissor. And then when we get towards the front, we want to make sure that we angle the comb out towards the front so it's going to leave these front pieces longer. We don't want the front pieces as short as in the middle here because they won't brush back. They'll stick straight out. Okay, so as I turn them around, I'm just combing it. I'm checking my work. Now with most men, the thickest part of our hair is right on the um, parietal and occipital area, said an easier way, the round of the head. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll take my texturizing shears and take a little bit of that weight out. Um, I don't want to cut it shorter because it's just going to stick out, but I want to take a little of the, the weight or that thickness out so as it grows in, it holds its shape. So we'll show you how we're going to do that. I'm going to use the same comb and just very lightly, I'm going to only close the scissor about a quarter of the way because I don't want to take too much, I just want to take a little. So you can see there just that little bit of hair that's falling out. That's all it, that's all it takes to make uh, a big difference in how the haircut grows in. And you'll develop a feel for it. You know, the more you cut someone's hair, you'll know, can I close the thinning shear all the way? Can I close it halfway? Um, the other thing too is the faster you move the comb, the less thickness you take out. The slower you move the comb, the more you take out. And then at the bottom here, if you can see, he has darker hair and lighter colored hair. So we want to blend those two colors together. So I want to stay right on the tip of the hair. I don't want to, I don't want to dig in at all because I don't want to thin it. I just want to blend the ends of the hair together to blend those 
two colors together. And you can see that blending it in better. And then we're going to do the same thing in this area on the other side. Okay, now we're going to grab our adjustable clipper and I'm going to leave it in the open position and I'm going to start the uh, outline around the, uh, around the outline of the haircut. So we want to thin out the sideburn a little bit. So now instead of like most haircuts where I take the, the comb and run it up like you would with uh, if you had an attachment on, I put the base of the comb at the bottom of the, uh, at the, bottom of the sideburn and I just angle it. That way I don't go too, too deep, too high up, because we want all that hair to brush back. We just want the sideburn a little closer. Sideburn hair is different. It grows thicker, and it's going to grow in faster. So we want to cut the sideburns quite a bit closer and tighter to the head than the rest of the haircut. So as it grows in, it grows in naturally. I'm going to pull that ear down. I still have it in the open position. And then if that doesn't get it, then I'm going to close it down all the way. Because we, we want to be really careful. We don't want it too tight here and, and, and wind up with um, that, like that white space between the ear and where the hair starts. And you don't want it so close here where it looks like this is sticking out. So I'm really not doing any tapering around the ear. I just did a light trim with the scissors and then the rest is just cleaning that line off the ear so it's just slightly off the ear. Now same thing here, I put the hold the comb in, I just angle it out at 45 degrees, run the clipper across at once, and then we're good, and then we're going to come back with our trimmer and make our line right there. Now at the bottom here, for our, for our outline, I, I, I don't want a, a, a very blunt straight line, and I want to leave it as low as possible. So I have the clipper in the open position. And right before I get to the hairline, I start to bevel it out a little bit. And then you want to stand back and look at your work, or you want to look at it in the mirror. And you want to make sure that you're always cutting against the grain. So on this right corner, the hair is growing towards me. So I have to go in the opposite direction. But when I do that, I make sure I have that clipper angles way out so that these cutting teeth aren't going up into, into his hairline. And a little clipper over comb behind the ear and then we're going to go around the ear again so the same thing on this sideburn we want to cut it nice and close to the skin but angle the comb out so we don't cut into the other area where we already cut. Okay, and now that we finished that, I'm going to switch to my, my finishing comb and my, my trimmer. And now we're just going to outline the haircut. All the work is done. We just want to make sure that his chin is parallel to the floor so we get a nice straight line on the sideburns. We're going to pull the ear down and make sure we didn't miss any hair there. I'm going to use the back side of the clipper just to grab any hair.
And while we're by the ear, I'm just gonna check the rim of the ear to make sure there's no hair growing. And we'll check the inside of the ear to make sure there's no hair. And by pushing down right here, it pops the ear out so you can very easily just get in there and clean the hair up. So what I'm doing on the side of the neck here is I'm just shaving in and I'm stopping right at the hairline. Because the hair grows all the way from all the way to the center, you're not really going to see a line by doing it this way. So I just shave in and stop and that's how I get my line. As I said before on the bottom, we really don't want a line. So basically right to where the t-shirt line is, we start and then we stop just below where we left off with the adjustable clipper. So now when he puts a collared shirt on, his hairline is down here, right on his natural hairline where it should be, and his collar is probably going to come to about here. So we're not going to have that big white space in between. Now what I like to do is I like to stretch the skin as much as I can and just glide the clipper over the skin. The clippers are very sharp, so they cut really close. So we don't need to press. We don't want to irritate the skin. By pressing down on the skin, it pops the hair out and allows you to get closer. Okay, and then we're going to come around behind the ear. So we'll pull that ear down and you see that hair pop out. We want to make sure we just get a little bit of it. We don't want a big, that big arc around the ear, but we want to make sure we get the hair off the back of the ear. And then again on the other side, we want to make sure his chin is parallel to the floor. We get a nice straight line on the sideburn. And then while we're here, we're going to check the ear. Okay, now we pretty much have the whole haircut done. We just want to check the top. So what I'm going to do for the top is I'm going to cut it scissor over comb and we're just going to take the same amount off the top that came off the sides. So I'm going to stand from behind and I'm going to lift it straight up. I'm just going to take about a quarter of an inch off is what we took off the sides and I'm not going to round it down in the front. I want to go straight out. And for fine hair, I like to cut it dry so I know exactly what it's going to do when I cut it. Okay, so now before we style his hair, I want to brush him off. Now I would say nine times out of ten with a, a business cut or this, this style haircut. Just see one thing right here on the side, a long piece. We'll get that while we're at it. Customer doesn't want to look like they have a lot of product in their hair. They want it to be low maintenance as possible. So what I do is I like to use a... Um, a fine mist hairspray. So what I want to do is brush the hair and get it exactly the, where we want it before I spray it. 
So what I'm going to use is our, uh, is my product line. It's a Zorian of New York. We're going to use our finishing spray. And what this is, is it's, it's infused with all natural ingredients. It rinses out real easily. It's made right here in the USA, not tested on animals. And uh, when I had it developed, what I wanted is I wanted something that dries really quick, but it doesn't have a really hard, crunchy feeling, and it's gonna, and it's still gonna, but it's still gonna last all day and rinse out easy. So pretty much all we do is we have the hair how he, he wants it. I hold it about six inches away. You know, four or five sprays on each side. And then the only thing that I do, I don't want to run a brush through it because it's like wetting it down. And then if you run a brush through it, it's going to make it separate a lot, just like wet hair. The only thing I would do is just take it and push the sides in just a little bit if it's a little wide on the sides. And then within five to 10 seconds, it dries and that's how it's going to look all day. So we're going to spin them around and show you. I mean, it's not a huge difference from when he came in, but that's the point of the haircut. With these business cuts, they want to keep it consistent and we want to give them a nice full look. So that's our business cut for fine hair, our every three to four week haircut. And I'd like to thank you for watching our video today.